I mean, are you happy I'm gone? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> First workout, the most important thing that I would do is this. Yes! Hello! I'm very hungry. So I'm my first workout voice. Cap so. Come on. Please. Please. God bless you, man. She's gonna say it. She's gonna. Yes! Oh, cry it. Hello, uncle. Book out, logo. Freedom! Freedom! Hello! <laughs> of course, when I'm home, mommy wants to take a picture! Wait, before, before I bathe, I'm going to let my mom have a taste test <laughs> of the water from the Kong. A bit different. Right? But smell a bit like from swimming pool. Normal water. Mm. Right? Softer. Way softer. Yeah. Bathe time. Boots yeah. are the hardest part to get Hello. off. It takes like forever. It feels so good to finally have warm water again tomorrow. Okay, next thing's next. How much is this foolish man paying? 150,000. Okay. Wow. Diamonds and sapphires. No. So it's 20 for you, Charlie. To make sure it's clean. And after that, I suppose. I am heading to bed. My usual lights out is like five hours ago. So, quick sleep. Oh, God, no. oh, good morning. Hey, Thomas. Are you done yet? I have to wax my hair. Okay. Wait, I don't have to. Everything feels a bit different now. My shoes feel lighter. The tap water actually stays on this time. shopping with mom. Always nice to spend some time with the family. So on to the main part of the whole point of this vlog. For the last three weeks that I was inside, I asked you guys, give me some questions that you guys want to ask, whatever it was. And I got so much more questions than I expected. I thought I was only gonna do like a two to three minute segment, like a small one, but there were so many questions. It's gonna make up like the rest of this vlog. So if you're not really interested in like Q and A or whatever, you can skip ahead, watch the next one. But if you are, and I'm telling you there's quite a few good questions, I'm gonna get deep on some of these. Um, okay, it is Q and A time, and it's already night. I love good questions, man. They just they dig out so much good content. What's your full name and how do you pronounce your last name? Kobankievich. Thomas Maria. How old are you? I am 21 this year, born in 95, birthday 23rd of November, which is quite soon. Which country were you born in and how old were you when you came to Singapore? Born in Berlin, Germany, and I was about four years old when I came to Singapore. Are you mixed blood? How are you and Angwan when both of your parents are Chinese? Or am I adopted? I am mixed blood. Here's where it gets a little bit messy. On the technical side, I am half Polish and half Chinese. But I was born in Germany, I don't speak Polish, I speak German, 
and at everything German guy that you see in my vlogs. That's my stepdad. What is your weight before and after NS? I actually lost 3 kgs. I went in 74.8 to about 75 kilos. I came out, just weighed myself to today morning, I was 72 kilos. What is your current height? I should be 183 centimeters. Big size. Who asked this question? But since you asked... About yay big? Damn! Is this your first time going bald? It is. Not used to it. My hairline is really deep back. Where did you go to primary school and secondary school and what did you study in polytechnic? I went to Redimas Primary School, Gunning Singh Secondary School, Diploma in Media and Communications in Polytechnic. First studied a year of law and management in Tomasic Polytechnic. Studied there for half a year, went around the world uh, playing games and I realized that I really love connecting with people and interacting with people. So that was when I dropped out and I went to study media and communications instead. Best decision of my life. I don't regret it at all. What was your CCA back in the secondary school days? I started off playing basketball for two years. I was always traveling during the holidays. So June holidays, I go back to China to meet my grandparents. Then December holidays, I go back to Germany to visit my father and my brother. So I never had time to join the holiday training. So I decided to quit basketball, join something more leisure. I joined band for a while. I got kicked out of there because I didn't think the conductor was teaching right. After that, I joined track and field where I spent the rest of my days there. I ran 400 meters. Not the fastest runner, not the slowest. I was okay. Is there any food you really, really hate? I don't like food that tastes like, it bites like rubber and it's squishy, those kind of textures. So a lot of seafood, no cockles, no. What's your favorite movie? Off the top of my head, I would almost always say Inception. Might not be my favorite favorite, but it's always in the top seven. Inception, Prestige, Memento, those are all amazing movies. What has been your best traveling destination so far? Enjoy all the small little specific aspects of each country partying in Taiwan, hiking in LA, the atmosphere in New York. I can't decide on like one specific city that I just love, so I don't know. What phone do you use? Samsung S7. How come you don't have a girlfriend? I've actually never had a girlfriend in my life. A lot of people get into relationships because of a crush. If I get a girlfriend, this person has to like last all the way to marriage. That kind of fairy tale. I don't think you need to rush into getting a girlfriend. Focus on yourself. When you are working towards your goal, and, you're, and this mysterious girl is working towards the same goal, eventually you guys will meet in the middle. And you guys are both aligned at the same objective at the end. And that's when it becomes easier for you two to bond, I guess. I'll, I'll make a relationship vlog sometime later. What type of girls are you into? Intellect, so they have to be smart. Next is compassion, and lastly, I guess looks. Yeah, looks makes sense. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry if I'm not saying any of the names, because Basically, I just compiled a whole list. The next time I do the q and I will list out all the names. I don't really have time this this book out. It's so rushed. There's so much things going on. How did you discover and end up working at the Smart Local? Brian Chu, the founder of the Smart Local, was a fellow professional gamer before as well. So when Singapore Polytechnic basically deployed us to go find our own internships, the first person I asked was him. I was like, hey, I heard about the Smart Local. Do you think I can intern there? It's like marketing or sales or something. He said, yes, come down for an interview. I went down for the interview. I passed the interview. Basically, Brian, the boss, thought I would be better off doing ideation for video team. So I went there and then that's when my, I guess, my abilities went, were fully maximized. You miss your TSL colleagues. I'm okay, we'll still meet, I guess. Are you still working at TSL? Did you leave TSL or are you going back after NS? I didn't leave TSL. I basically, I have to do NS, so I have to leave. Are you going back after NS? Two years later, a lot of things are going to change. I don't know yet. In the current situation, I don't really... There is this vlog by Casey Neistat, and he made a very good point. I don't know which episode it was. He drew this graph whereby when you first enter a company, how much you learn and then this time. So when you first join the company, how much you learn from them just spike, spikes up. And then you would start to plateau. Doing this plateau is when you should be starting to either do new things, expose yourself to new things in the company, or leave and go somewhere else so that you can once again rise up. I feel in TSL, I've hit this plateau. 
So I feel like I should be doing something else, either gain skills somewhere else and then go back, or I also don't fit into the team as much anymore because I'm doing this. I really prefer doing this because I have full creative control here. Two years later, it really depends. I don't know who's going to be in charge by then. I don't know what kind of content they'll be creating. If they need my skill set, I would happily help. Where is the TSL office? 71 McNair Road. It's public. You guys can send in fan mail. Not that I'm there anymore, but... What are your hobbies? I vlog most of the time, play games, sport. How did you get into the gaming industry and why did you quit? After Dota 1, my friend Chris, he introduced me to StarCraft. It's this amazing RTS game, very high skill level, really pushes your creative juices, also mechanical skills. So there's a lot of aspects you need to push yourself. Played and played and played, eventually got good, started earning money from tournaments, uh, started getting sponsors and stuff like that. For the last two years, that was like my life. Basically what happened was at the start of the year, I went through this like little breakup thing, which really like trip me up mentally so every time I entered a tournament right before the qualifying match I would start losing 2-1, 2-1, 2-1 so when you're investing that much time into like a game for example into a career and it's not paying off it's time to find something new and I found this I really loved video making after I picked up vlogging and I just continued and this gave me the same kind of thrill and the same kind of passion for churning creative juices and producing creative content and kind of pushing myself every single day to make something new and do something better. Was it like being a pro? Uh, it was very difficult. You had to balance a lot between your work and life. So, for example, if a tournament is coming out, that becomes my first priority. School becomes second, friends become third. So I skip out a lot of meeting friends. If school exams are coming up, exams become priority, gaming becomes third, friends become second, something like that. So you have to always keep shuffling. In Singapore, we have a very hasty schedule. So you have to know exactly, let's say if you only have four hours to practice a day, you have to be very specific. What do you want to practice every single hour? It's not playing a game, it's practicing a game. Huge difference. Being a pro was kind of amazing because you basically did something you really, really loved. And I was traveling around the world meeting all these different people. And to, to this day, I would like to think a lot of them are still my very, very close friends. And I can hit them up anytime to ask for advice and stuff like that and um, they've taught me so much changed me as a person if any of you are from the esports community love you guys that's where bliss comes from by the way if you guys don't know bliss it's in my instagram handle as well it's from gaming i still play video games yes i play a lot of video games i don't have much time now because I, i'm focusing on the vlog vlog is my number one priority but if i have extra time i would play overwatch i would play it this actually sent me a game key i'm gonna use that i'm gonna play it like the next vlog what video editor do you use and how do you find the songs for a video? I can ask this so many times. Jeez, I use Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. How do you find the songs for your videos? First got the initial song from another vlogger. I basically went through the tags list, uh, went to listen to similar artists. And then from there, I found this guy named Brock Berrigan. His music is amazing. The vibes that it creates. I bought music from him, asked him, I emailed him asking whether I could use his music. He allowed me to. Most of the music now is from him. Did vlogging change your life and do people recognize you on the streets? Vlogging did change my life. I am a lazier person, but having a vlog means I do it for the vlog. The vlog does it for me. Basically, it pushes me to do something more every single day. Do people recognize you on the streets often? Not super often. A good average would be like one person every two days. Do people give you weird stares when you vlog? Sometimes. It's not weird. They're just curious. Like, why is this guy holding such a big camera in front of his face talking to a screen and there's like this weird fuzzy little thing on top of that camera? What advice would you give someone who has low self-esteem and would love to vlog? Keep on doing. If you're not comfortable with something, keep pushing yourself until you are. Same as like physical training. I'm not very good at push-ups. So every single day I'll do more push-ups, more push-ups until I'm used to it. How do you get gather the courage to travel overseas by yourself? I really wanted to experience times whereby you have no safety net at all. If you mess up here, there's no mom to help you out. There's no backup plan, nothing. It's all on you. That's when you really train yourself to be independent. But it gets kind of lonely. I like traveling in twos the best. Two to three. Splitting up hotel like accommodation fares, you save just so much money with two to three people. What is your creative processes like and what has been your favorite shooting location so far? Creativity to me as an analytical process, yes, but the best ideas are serendipitous, serendipitous, serendipitous. They come to you, they seem amazing at that point of time, write them down and you make them. It's all in that fuel of passion where you make the video and this fuel of passion 
just overflows into the audience and that's what makes it amazing to watch. But of course, there are some creative processes. So for example, what I think are in trend, I'll do it. For example, the Pokemon Go video. I knew Pokemon Go was out. Doing any video on Pokemon Go will get you views. I wanted to do something whereby I would play it once and be done with it. 24 hours was the theme I went with. Piece these two together, bam, 24 hours Pokemon Go. Highest views on my channel currently. The other thing, mostly creative processing is ba to me is basically linking dots together. So if you have one idea here, another idea here, join them two together, mix them, and then you have something you have something new. No idea is fully unique in itself. It's all joined by various dots. Whether it's millions of dots into one idea or it's two dots into one idea or three dots into one idea. That's how creativity works. Favorite shooting location so far must have been Taiwan on that mountain thingy. That was so beautiful. So beautiful. From your first to your recent vlogs, what are the three changes you have seen in yourself that you are proud of? Wow. Oh, digging deep. I think some sort of individuality is that I'm not just purely copying style of someone. For example, I have a few trademark edits like glitch, shape, okay, the, the snap, stuff like that. Very Being very playful with transitions is something that I think is quite unique to me. Number two, the doing more aspect. I really don't know. We'll get back to that one day. Ask me again. The next Q and A. Ask me again. What inspires you the most to keep going, even at your lowest point? What gives you the motivation to live life to the fullest? Almost all teenagers of this generation go through a phase where they feel super down and depressed. After that, basically, someone asked me this question of what makes you wake up every day in the morning. And to me, it comes down to two things. Number one knowing that I am not the best version of what I am supposed to be. But today I'm like this, tomorrow I can be better, the next day I can be even better, and the next and the next and the next. Knowing that I'm not at my 100% is what I feel like my job is not done yet. Number two, you're put here on this earth with some sort of responsibility. You have a role to play, whether you're like the best toilet cleaner in the world, a president, or you're like the top class murderer, but you have a role to play, not only about yourself, you're here to help others. Your role always affects others, so you have responsibility, and that responsibility is the second reason why I wake up in the morning. All right, time for NS stuff. Why are you only going for NS at this age, but not at 18. You're allowed to defer NS until right before university. And so I went to Polytechnic, that adds an extra year, so that's 19. Then I transferred, which makes me 20. Are you getting arrowed in NS because you're Angmo? Nope. I speak Singlish. People feel like I fit in, or that's how I like to think at least. What section did you get into? Police, commando, etc. That's not a section, that's a unit. I'm, I'm in BMT for now, so there's no unit. I will only know my unit like two months later. Do you have vacation days? You do. My vacation day is set. It's during the block leave. I think it's December 5th to 10th. Do, do you have to bring a lot of stuff into the army? I didn't get my packing slip when I was supposed to go into the army So I had no idea what I was supposed to bring then I just brought a small backpack. I survived So how are you planning to budget your monthly NS allowance on? Good question I don't have a specific budget. hope each month I would spend let's say 250 or less I would spend the other 250 just saving it or probably for overseas trips eventually as the past three weeks of national service taught you about freedom and more about yourself it has taught me that I am a person who does not like obeying authority I super hate being in, in a routine and to listen to someone basically shout at me and scold me for things I really don't care about what's the lifestyle in NS like was it hard to adapt to the conditions living on your own I would say I'm fairly independent ever since I was a kid and that's all thanks to my mom. It's quite easy for me to adapt. Do you guys start training right away after you all wake up? No. You fall in, you eat your breakfast, uh, drink up a lot of water, then you do your first like physical training. Do you guys bathe with guys openly in front of each other or is it compulsory to do so? No. You guys are not, it's not compulsory for you to bathe in front of another man. What are you talking about? Of course, if there's very little time, people start to share showers. How's the food? A lot of people say the food's bad. I think the food's actually okay. but. I'll give you this one advice. I'm not going to tell you why, but here's an advice that uh, if you do feel hungry, which you are going to, don't take seconds. Don't freaking take seconds, no matter how hungry you are. What was the most enjoyable activity in N in NS? SOC, something something obstacle course. I love obstacle courses, jumping over walls, climbing ropes, walking and balancing beams. That shit is fun. It's like a adult's version of a playground. Tell us about your bunk mates in your platoon are able to show them, I will include them in a vlog next time. Uh, my bunkmates in my platoon are amazing. They all try to do their best and there's no one who really like lacks off. So I really like my bunkmates, I feel super blessed. What's your favorite army or NS related word? 
Samula. That means again. So if you mess up a command or if you mess up anything, the, the sergeant would shout Samula, and you would have to do it again. It just sounds so cool. Speaking of which, no one asked this, but I'm gonna say, I feel super blessed about. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm kissing their asses. I feel super blessed that my commanders are people who are like can be friendly, but when it comes down to training, they're super strict. We try our best to discipline up during training, so there's no like having fun. We know that they're all. Commanders. And every time we get scolded, it's for a legitimate reason. And there are some times where you're scolded and you just feel super pissed off and you get blindsided of why you're actually getting punished. And our commanders actually are patient enough to tell us every single time why why do you think you're getting punished? It's because of this, 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 this. I think it's super important that they do that and they're not just like scolding you for no reason. I'm fine with period for now, so who knows? After this, we might all get just get shed on. Are you going to give up your current citizenship for? SG citizenship after NS. No, I will not. I feel like my passport is a part of my identity, so I keep my German citizenship. But I love this country and the people here so much, so I really want to keep my PR ship, my permanent residency. That's why I'm serving the army. What are your plans after NS? Work or further studies like uni? I'm not a huge fan of the education system in Singapore. My field of work portfolio matters way more than education. Study if you want to, really think about it. The ideal thing would be that I would vlog full time and hopefully help out at TSL as well. Maybe even do some esports stuff like commentating or hosting and stuff like that. Where do you want to travel next? I wanna go to India, I wanna go to Korea, and I want to go to Laos and Macau. Laos and Con Macau will be connected, so that's three. What dream are you trying to achieve? I don't know, I don't really know how to answer this question directly. To be a person who can motivate others to do more and to realize more about themselves, think more about the world, think differently about things. That was, like, those are a lot of pieces of the puzzle which don't really fit, but I hope that kind of makes sense. I what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing in 10 days, so. I can't answer this. Live in the moment. Will you do a meetup after NS? Right now, I don't think my subscriber accounts justifies a meetup. If let's say after two years I have quite an amount, I don't mind doing a meetup. I think I'm not giving enough attention to my viewers at all. So doing a meetup is really cool. You actually meet them physically. Even doing this q and I was really thinking about it because I thought I wouldn't get enough questions. But this is a lot of questions, a lot of good questions. Yeah, I hope I didn't miss anything. My brother compiled the list. If anything happens, blame him. If I miss any questions, just post it in the in the comment section below and I will answer them manually in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. It was really, really fun for me to share so much thoughts with you guys. Really thank you guys so much for watching all these vlogs. Wait, but before you guys go, important thing. This is something that I really, really love to do. I did it on Beagle some time ago. Basically, Every week, you guys can send me either on Instagram, in the comment section below, or you guys can email me, whatever. Whatever means it is. Ask me about whether it's a personal struggle, like, uh, dude, how do I get this girl? Or I'm having trouble talking to my friends, I'm getting bullied, uh, I'm, I'm having trouble talking to my mom. Any kinds of like personal questions that you would like advice on. Basically, you're asking me, and people for advice. I'm gonna launch this new segment. I'm gonna call it like, I don't know, chill out or hang out session. So every week, anyone can send me questions for advice. It's It might start off with just me, but eventually I'm gonna get guests on who I feel have a perspective on the issue. So whether it's relationship advice or it's like parental advice, I might get my mom on and I'll discuss with her about the issues. So I really wanna do a segment like that and help people out. If you want it to be anonymous, just send it in anonymous. If you want it to be some weird name, just send it like, oh, hi, I'm Jane, something like that. Probably every book out, if I can, I will cover a few of them. So basically, an advice segment. In the comment section below, this is the task for this week. Since you guys asked me all these questions, I have one question for all of you guys. What should we call ourselves? Louis Lowe's last time said Th Thomasians. The horrible suggestion. Uh, I know Jesse Wellens used peeps. I would totally call you guys pals or buddies, that doesn't matter. Suggestions there. We're gonna need a name for our crew here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think this has been a long ass vlog. I'll be booking in on Sunday again. See you guys next vlog. Kate. Okay. Now.